I'm Philip Ward, Editor-in-Chief of Aunt Mini Europe. Gadolinium safety and deposition in the brain has been a very important issue this week at ECR. I'm very pleased to have with me today Dr. Alexander Radbrook from Heidelberg and Essen in Germany. Um, Alex, welcome to ECR. Thanks, Philip. It's a pleasure to be here, and I thank you a lot for the kind invitation. Excellent. Now, as well as being a radiologist, Alex is a lawyer as well, so I must start with the question of whether there would be any, any um, medical legal cases in Europe similar to the case in the US involving TV actor Chuck Norris and his wife. Are we, are we likely, do you think, to see um, any, any legal cases in, in Europe over gadolinium? So there, I, first of all, I have to point out that's a long time ago that I have done law, but um, so it's ten, I'm working as a radiologist right now for 10 years. But uh, the first thing that you learn in law school is always that lawsuits are always basically the worst solution. So I really hope that we won't see any cases here. But the truth is also, and that is very important, we have to take the complaints of these patients very seriously. And uh, we really have to go to the, bottom of it, or to the bottom of it. We have to dig deeper and we have to understand why these patients are complaining. Because if you see some of the videos actually of Chuck Norris' wives, it's totally clear that she was severely suffering and we have to understand what's going on there. Okay, excellent. Now, for, for radiologists in Europe who are concerned about this, who are anxious about gadolinium use, what advice would you have for them to reassure them? I think the most important advice, and this is always what I tell my patients, is that actually we injected nearly half a billion, half a billion of injections of gadolinium to patients, and we don't know any clinical correlates yet. And of those half a billion, perhaps half of them might, might have been linear. I really think that... Um, if there would be like really severe side effects, we would have already noticed it. But nevertheless, we have to explore it. Okay. What, what do you think um, radiologists can learn in terms of how they use gadolinium, though? I mean, should they, should they still go ahead and, and, and proceed in, in, using, in using the agents? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think what is very important is that we understand that gadolinium is a is a drug like everything else. Like you have to perform a risk-benefit analysis prior to administering it. And uh, if you think that you've got a diagnostic benefit, go for it. And it's very important to point out that not actually giving gadolinium-based contrast agents might also uh, give the patients a high risk of missing a diagnosis. Okay. The difficulty, I think it's, uh, there's an article on this in, in today's ECR Today newspaper, um, is the lack of reliable safety data. And one expert has said that it will take 10 years before the safety, safety data is really there on gadolinium. Do you, do you agree with that comment? Yeah, basically I agree that we don't know anything yet in terms of clinical correlates. And it's also very important to point out that this whole debate might be a phantom debate. So a debate about nothing. Mm -hmm. But we don't know it yet. Um, and it's very important that we differentiate between the clinical correlates. We don't know anything there yet and the mechanism of gadolinium deposition. And I think we learned a lot in the last years about the mechanism of gadolinium deposition. And there is indeed a huge difference between linears and macrocyclics. We learned that all gadolinium-based contrast agents initially enter the brain, and that this has been shown in animal experiments after four and 24 hours. So at the beginning, every, the concentrations for both Linears and macrocyclics is the same. However, after a while, we, we find ex nearly exclusively the linears in the brain with the macrocyclics close to the level of detection. And the reason for that is most likely that we've got a partial dechelation of the linears while this does not happen with the macrocyclics. That means the whole complex from linears and macrocyclics is washed out over time while there's a lot of evidence that we have partial dechelation and subsequent binding of the gadolinium from linears to other partners. And that also explains why we exclusively see the hyperintensities in the brain exclusively for linears, not for macrocyclics. Okay. Now, a related point is obviously the patient's feelings about their scans and about the anxiety about some of the agents. Have you had anybody refusing an MRI scan um, in Heidelberg or in Essen because of what they've read, because of the media coverage of, of gadolinium? Yeah, we had that. And I also got personal emails by concerned patients. And I totally can understand that. Of course, everybody is concerned about this debate. But I really think it's very important that we reassure our patients that, again, it could be a total phantom debate, a debate about nothing. And uh, actually, a nice story is that uh, 
the people that are most concerned are the scientists because those very often uh, assess the MRI on themselves and got 20 injections or 30 injections in a row and they've got right now a lightning uh, dentate nucleus and they still are very, very okay. good. So I really think it's very important to calm this whole debate. But how, how, what, what in practical terms should people be saying to their patients? How, how can they calm them? How can they reassure them, do you think? Actually, I always take the number of half a billion uh, injections. I think this is what we have to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, we are cautious, and uh, actually there's the debate between uh, Europe and the United States about the precautionary principle, but uh, we have to uh, have in mind that, well, we are already using these agents for 30 years. Okay. You've mentioned about the differences between Europe and the US, and that is, includes particularly the FDA and the EMA, the European Medicines Agency. Is there any hope, do you think, of a consensus being reached between the regulators? Honestly speaking, I'm very skeptical on this. So actually the difference is that uh, the European Union is following its precautionary principle. That means that we've shown that we've got, there's evidence for dechelation for the linears, we've shown that the whole sum of gadolinium is higher with the linears and uh, so they decided in precautionary approach to remove the linears from the market. So um, in contrast, the FDA has decided, well, as long as we don't know any clinical correlates, there's no reason to actually remove mm -hmm. these agents from the market. Mm -hmm. And um, to be very honest, I don't think that these positions will change in the next years, but I think it's okay. That's why we are scientists. Both our approaches are understandable. And uh, well, let's have the scientific debate to go on. Okay. Now, in, in terms of industry, the, they've been very, very affected, obviously, by the withdrawals, by the, by the regulators' decisions. Um, what can you tell us about how industry is adapting and how they might in the future? Yeah, I think what we clearly see is a change in industry towards generics of macrocyclics. An example would be GE in uh, Europe. They have la just launched a macrocyclic product. I think this will go on more in this direction. I think we will see a shift of the market towards macrocyclics agents. Okay. Overall, would you say that you're positive about the future or are you a little cautious about, about how things are going with gadolinium safety? Actually, I'm, I always try to be positive and... Um, we have to, uh, I think the, how this whole debate will develop also depends on us as a radiological com community. I really we think we have to come together. There are differences in scientific opinions in the United States and in Europe currently, and a lot of good friends and colleagues of mine have a different uh, point of view there, but I think it's important that we come together, do the science together, do evidence-based science, and actually, we just had a meeting two weeks ago uh, at the National Institute of Health in Washington where all, a lot of experts all the world uh, of the world came together and I think that's the way we have to pursue getting everybody on the table and to uh, assess the best uh, diagnostic method and the best uh, way we treat our patients to have them really uh, treated uh, in the best way and in the safest way. Excellent. So overall the, there's clearly a lot of work still to be done. Yeah. Um, hopefully ECR 2018 will improve that, will, will lead to new findings, new safety and to reassurance. Alex, thank you very much for speaking with us, and we wish you a very successful Congress. Thank you, Philip. Philip Ward, Art Mini Europe, wrapping up.